One day in a small town, a local philosophy professor, known for his unique teaching methods, made a special visit to a primary school. The day of his visit, he arrived in a classroom with an intriguing glint in his eyes and a large empty glass jar tucked under his arm. This instantly caught the kid's attention. With an air of playful mystery, it was clear this wasn't going to be an ordinary school day. He placed the jar on the table in front of everyone and then, from under the table, brought out a pile of large stones, each about the size of a fist. Carefully, he began placing these stones into the jar one by one until no more could fit. He turned to the class and asked, is this jar full? Seeing that no more stones could fit, the students nodded and replied, yes. To their surprise, the professor then pulled out a bag of pebbles. He started pouring them into the jar, shaking it slightly. The pebbles, much smaller than the stones, rolled into the open spaces between the stones. Again, he asked the class, is this jar full now? Some of the students started to understand his point and hesitated, but many agreed again, yes, now it's full. The professor then produced a bag of sand and started pouring it into the jar. The tiny grains filled all the remaining spaces between the stones and pebbles. For the third time, he asked, is the jar full now? The students, catching on, responded, probably not. Lastly, the professor pulled out a jug of water and poured it into the jar, saturating the sand. Only then did he agree that the jar was indeed full. He looked at his students and explained, I want you to realize that this jar signifies your life. The stones are the important things, your family, health, and friends. Things that, if everything else was lost and only they remained, your life would still be full. The pebbles are the other things that matter, your job, your house, your car. The sand represents the small stuff, the trivial things. He continued, if you put the sand or the pebbles into the jar first, there's no room for the stones. The same goes for life. If you spend all your time and energy on the small stuff, the daily to-dos and the mundane tasks, you'll never have room for the things that truly matter most. The stones are those things critical to your true essence and happiness. They represent spending quality time with your loved ones, caring for your health, and pursuing your dreams and passions. If you don't prioritize these, you may find at the end that you've left out the most important parts of your life. He then concluded powerfully, make sure you put the stones in first. They are your foundation, your main pillars. They are your family, your health, your dreams. Don't let the pebbles or the sand, the secondary tasks, the routine, the trivialities, take precedence over them. At the end of your journey, it is the stones that will weigh the most in your jar of life, defining its value and meaning. Let your life be driven by the things that enrich your spirit, that fulfill your soul, and that matter the most. The rest is just pebbles and sand. As the professor concluded his speech, a thoughtful student raised her hand and asked, but professor, what about the water? Where does that fit into our lives? The professor smiled at her insightful question and responded, ah, the water. The water signifies that no matter how full your life may seem, there's always room for a cup of coffee or tea with a friend. No matter how busy you are, there's always space for small moments of joy, relaxation, and connection with others. In our lives, we often find ourselves juggling between priorities, trying to fit everything into the limited hours of the day. We get so caught up in the hustle and bustle, the small tasks, that we sometimes forget what truly matters. This jar, our life, it's not infinite. It has only so much space. If we choose to fill it first with sand and pebbles, the mundane and the peripheral, we leave no room for the stones, the things of real value and meaning. So, I urge you, focus on your stones first, your family, your health, your passions, and your dreams. These are the aspects of your life that, when everything else is stripped away, will still leave you fulfilled and content. Take care of these precious stones first. Make time for those you love and care for. Nurture your physical and mental well-being. Pursue your passions fearlessly. And while you do that, never forget to make room for learning, 
growth, and kindness. And the water? That's the unexpected, the unplanned. That's the coffee with a friend, the spontaneous laughter, the shared moments of joy. Even when life seems so full, there's always room for these. There's always space to connect, to relax, to simply be. The pebbles and the sand. They'll fit in around the important stuff. They're the tasks and responsibilities that are necessary but shouldn't consume all your time or energy. They shouldn't crowd out the space meant for your stones. In the end, remember, it's not about having a busy life filled to the brim, but about leading a fulfilling life rich with experiences that truly matter to you. It's about not just counting the days but making the days count. It's about balancing the stones, the pebbles, the sand, and the water in a way that enriches your life and brings you true joy. Thank you for watching. Until next time, remember, prioritize your stones and make every moment count.